look at a lot of narcissistic parents on this channel. A lot of you guys might remember the video, insane narcissistic mom loses it when son refuses to come home. I think my video has like 5 million views. The original has over 40 million, which is crazy because that video was like an hour long, which kind of tells me that's something that a lot of us relate to. Maybe experiencing a bad parent, maybe going through a lot of emotional manipulation and seeing it in 4K and realizing, oh my God, this is real. It's a crazy feeling, especially having sympathy for the person that's on the screen in front of you and sometimes putting yourself in the same place as that person. Now, this video is interesting. It has one aspect that I'm not familiar with that I actually know a lot of people have dealt with before. Seven years ago, my mom made an account in my social and my name, and I didn't know about it. It's one of the most shocking dynamics I feel like I have ever seen in family relationships. This is how you act when you drink. This is why you never come over and see me. And that is financial abuse. This is something that has always shocked me because how could a parent do that to their child? Even more interestingly is how can a parent do that to their child and then make them feel like it's all their fault. 10 years ago, my mom set up an AT&T account in my name so she could have cable TV. She didn't have good enough credit, so she decided to ruin mine. She canceled the account and moved, failing to pay the last bill. I started receiving bills in the mail and got a call from collection. This girl sitting here in the front, this is the woman that uploaded it, this is the daughter. Over here on the right is the mom. The mom is making a call right now to AT&T because she told her daughter that she would pay the bill, fix it up and close the account. And so her daughter said, well, you get them on the, the phone. You get them on the phone right now and fix it. And so she said, all right, so that's where we are now. No, I don't need anything. I live with my boyfriend and he has everything in his, I don't need anything. I just need to resolve. I don't need mom, anything. you have a closing bill, that's just your daughter's name and you want to know she wants to put it in her name. Yes, it, she said it's easier if I just pay you for that bill. I need you to yeah, take care of your bill. Account, we can take you to accounts receivable, um, then you can pay the account. Okay, so it's okay. already, it, hold, hold, hold on, it's already closed. What is the amount? I don't have to, what's the account number? I don't know. I just okay, got the bill. The bill? And, do you have the bill in front of you? No, I don't have the bill in front of Yo! me. Yo! This is about to send me already. This is such a small detail, but what's happening here is the mom doesn't want to take any accountability that she opened up this account. It's entirely her account. The daughter has never opened this account. She has never seen this account. She has never used this account. She has nothing to do with it. So when the lady on the phone asked her, what is the account number? The mom looks at the daughter. The mom knows that her daughter has nothing to do with this account. So why the fuck is she even looking at her? And then the lady on the phone says, well, do you have a bill for the account? And then the mom's like, do you have the bill? Why the fuck would she have the bill? So it's so weird that the mom knows her daughter has no involvement in this at all. But for some reason to take a little accountability off herself, she's roping her daughter in like she's involved in this at all. She has no information. This is the start of me losing it. Okay, so Haley. What was the phone number? What was the phone number? When you set it up, it was you that set it up, right? Yeah, I have no idea how to make the account. I don't know. Oh my God. Okay, my phone number is... Daughter says, I, I don't know. I don't have this information. I didn't make the account. And her mom says, oh my God. Like her daughter's the problem. These are the very small details that will make people lose their fucking mind. Especially children that don't understand what's happening. When the mom says, oh, oh my God. That tone, those words, all of that, it makes somebody feel like they have done something wrong. She didn't do anything wrong. She doesn't have the information. So there's absolutely no reason for that tone or those words to come out. Okay, let me get, that's the number you give and then you'll pop up, okay? You gotta talk to the counselor and then you can take a payment, okay? Well, well I can't pay it today, but I want to know. Yeah, I can't pay it today. Okay, so well, I'm not having it affect my credit. I'm not having it in my name. They can put your name and they can have you pay she, it when she, you can. She said, okay, let's see what the note says. In the beginning, she made it seem like she was going to pay. Now she says not today. Also, never admitting that she made the account and that it should just be transferred to her for billing purposes. Her daughter's not even asking her to pay this today. She said, I, I didn't do this. Take some accountability and transfer this over to you. I don't care. I don't want this shit in my fucking social Can you security tell number. Me how the account is closed. Yeah, totally. and that's an issue now because it's affecting me, not you. I don't, I can't get any So now the account is closed and it's on default or whatever. It's unpaid, but it's still in her name. That's what the problem is. I don't, I can't get any information because you just talk and yell. Well, well, I don't have information because I don't know the f***ing right. account number. Hashtag X. Like, I don't, how much is the bill? I don't know. I have to f***ing find.
find it. Well, why'd you call him without it in your hand? Because <laughs> Why did you call it without you having the bill in your hand? Why does she keep just throwing the problem back at her? Oh, I don't even have to explain this. You feel it. You feel it. You feel it in your bones, don't you? I don't know if you do. I do. If you feel it in your bones that this has happened to you, you were not in the wrong. Well, why'd you call them without it in your hand? Because they should be able to look this shit up. That's why. I'm leaving. No, you're not fucking leaving. Yeah, that's right. Talk to me nice or I'm leaving. Mom, I'm so done with you. Hello? It's Lynette. I'm trying to. I'm with my daughter. I'm trying to figure out. She has a bill for a hundred bucks. At a okay. No. What happened was she doesn't have a bill for a hundred bucks. You know what's going on. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Bose, try not to get triggered. Challenge. Where are my notes? Where are my thought? Where, where are the notes? It's not real, and I'm in a happy place. It's not real, and I'm in a happy place. What happened was, seven years ago, my mom made an account in my social and my name. And I didn't know about it. For TV cable, only. For TV. And I hate that right there. The daughter comes on and starts to say what the problem is. This is a huge problem. This is fucked up. And then the mom immediately minimizes it by saying, it's just TV. Credit is credit. Taking your child's identity it is a problem. Credit is credit. Bills are bills. Defaulting on something on, under her name and stealing your child's identity. That is the issue. And so sometimes people want to minimize what you're fighting for when you're fighting for the principle. And they're like, oh, it was, it was just a joke. Oh, it was just a bill. No, you're fighting for the principle. And then they make you feel bad by diminishing it to something as silly as TV. She's venting rightfully so, about the position she's in. And the mom says it's just TV. And she then feels like she's being too much. So she corrects herself and says, okay, yeah, it was a TV, but it's so much more than that. Listen to that again, though. What happened was seven years ago, my mom made an account in my social and my name, for and TV, I didn't know about it for TV cable only. for TV. And the, I am 22 now living alone, and I'm getting bills. And I have, I have you guys for my cell phone and my cell phone only. I have Comcast for my cable. So I'm getting cable bills from AT&T on an, an, by a name that I have never gone by. So okay. I need, stop. I need this Ooh, bill. You're a bitch. I need, yeah, well, so are you for doing this to me. She, I need this bill that, put in that's her right. name, her social, because I am not having it affect me. She's not, I don't want her to pay me. I want her to pay the bill off herself. That's what we need done. I don't know the name is of the account. Is it an access account? No, she, she closed it. She closed it with my name and my social. And now it's in my, now I have a bill this to pay. This you're going to have to do. You're going to have to speak with our department because yep. it's already closed. We're not able to change anything on it because it's okay. a public account. Can, can, I, can I just pay the bill? How much is the bill that I can just pay? What's the, what's the account number? And I'll be able to check that for you. I only know my ATT. She doesn't know. I don't know. know. I, I, I didn't make it. So How the I, fuck would I know? She's... I don't know. She's, I don't know. She's the problem. It's the little things. The little things. And they, they hurt so bad. And what's your social? Oh, you don't know it since you used it? Oh! I love how she is fighting for herself and not backing down because my boy, I never had the balls. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. If you tell me it's my fault, then I would say, okay, well, I guess it's my fault and I'll just go away in the corner now. But she said, oh, you don't have my social number? Why don't you go, why don't you go get it? Honestly, I would call the fucking cops. I'm not playing at this point. Now I am healed. I would call the police. Watch him drag you away. Say, where's my social now? It just pisses me off that you The lady you do doesn't need to hear all this bickering. It just pisses me off that She's you trying to help us. It pisses me She's off that She's trying to help us. But you uh, the lady doesn't need to hear all of this bickering. She's trying to help us. What is she doing? She, her mother is making herself a unit with somebody else so that her daughter feels isolated. When you are fighting for a cause and somebody makes you feel isolated, you start to feel like you're in the wrong because you're like, why is everybody over there? Why is everybody on that team? And why am I alone? This feels wrong. I swear I'm right. Why is nobody with me? When you feel isolated, you will stop fighting for your cause. And she did it in such a simple way. She's trying to it help pisses us. Me She's off trying that. to help us. But you did something and you don't even remember what you it did. Was You're an ago. idiot. Yeah, well, okay, good, good luck, mom. You can't okay. just use my Whatever. social. I'm sorry. She's trying to help us. You I'm know, trying to take care of this. It's, you know what? It's not, it's not coming up for me under that. I don't know if it's affecting my credit or not. Principal. I've never known about this until I started. She doesn't have it. 
have your social. I need her to pay this bill over the phone. And I'm, I'm done. I'm so irritated right now. This is my social security number. Okay, the lady this is, is trying to help us. She doesn't have anything in your social. Stop interrupting me, mom. I, just, I don't need your background noise. I hate this mom in the video. I hate it. But I've dealt with this a lot before. And over the past couple of years, I kind of wanted to understand. A parent like this can be made, in my opinion, when as a child, they were forced to take a lot of accountability for things that weren't necessarily their fault. So if a parent like this from a very young age was blamed for everything, by a parent or a caretaker, they fear accountability. They fear even the smallest bit of accountability. So then now, because they didn't work through their stuff, they're gonna pass on a new form of that to their child. They push all accountability onto everybody around them. They want everyone around them to fix their problems. They want everybody around them to take accountability for things that they cause. They fear accountability so much that they have developed an arsenal of tools to push it back by any means necessary because it hurts so, so, so badly. Just some food for thought. Uh, you don't have to extend grace to people that hurt you, but it can give you a sense of relief if you can understand why they are the way they are. Grace is over. Fuck this lady. How much is the bill you get? It's like $150. So I'll just give you the money for the fucking bill and then you pay it off and it's done. But I also need no. to know if it's affected me any way, if there's any late fees you or anything. And you pull your credit account and you'll see. I don't even know how so to do that. Find the bill and give me the bill. You. Stop yeah. Doing do shit when I'm trying That's to get what they both care. said. They I don't know where the bill is at, mom. No. Mom tries to take control again. Daughter says, "Fuck you, dude. I know exactly what you're doing." Yes, dude. And She said, "Get get back in here. Where are you going?" I don't care, dude. In here. You know, I don't know. All I know is that I started getting a bill that I never re made, and this has been going on for okay. seven years, which is extremely, you know ridiculous i i would think that if she wanted to use my social she could ask me you know what's also really scary is that the daughter just said i don't know how to check my credit who knows what else is on there she just started getting this bill after a couple of years i would not be surprised if there ends up being more stuff on there you you just... said I should just give you the hundred dollars yeah well i need to know the exact bill price because i'm not gonna get gypped by you oh. alcoholics are ridiculous Ooh. This is how you act when you drink. This is why you never come over and see me. Because I can't handle you when you drink. She's doing so good. Oh! This girl's doing, okay, she's doing you, so good. Can you transfer me to the fraud department, please? Yes. Sure, give me one I The other lady on the phone, I bet you she believes the daughter too, because there's way too much. She already transferred me. I, I would also report her for fraud to the government too, because she used her daughter's social security number for the automatic credit check because her credit was bad. And then she just made up a fake name and closed the account and then thought it didn't matter. That's fraud in general. No, I'm in the middle of trying to resolve something. You're not going anywhere. D bro, she pissed. I just realized she sped up the video. I thought she slammed that thing shut. I was like, fine, I get it. I said you're not going anywhere right now because I'm trying to resolve something. What? I know that. Mom wants to have a little control by getting out of the room. Just doesn't want to be in there with all of it. Wants to feel like she has a little bit of agency. Like, I don't even want to give you mascara right now because you're being held ir irritating and like rude to me. I never asked you to take my dog for a walk. I can walk and perfectly find myself, thank you. Oh, dude. I hate that she's, like, so alone in this call right now. Sometimes feeling alone for a while will really start to wear down on you. You could be really strong in your convictions for a while. And then the more that you get isolated, this could happen over a few minutes, hours, weeks, months, especially if it's happening within a group. The isolation will wear you down. It will wear you down. And... Just because the isolation wears you down doesn't mean that you're wrong. If you just can't fight anymore, that's okay. Put it down, but look back on it a few years later and validate yourself if you can. Because if you don't, you will have lingering self-doubt for a very long time. And it is a superpower to be able to trust yourself. You gotta have an ally. The best ally is yourself. Look at what they gave me for Christmas at work. She's still trying to communicate with her mom even though her mom f***ed her this hard, bro. Yeah, she's either trying to connect with her or trying to get her in the room. Fix this so I can take him around the block before I go. Okay. Leave it to me. 
I don't like this because this could be a couple different things. You know, not every one person is the same, but what I think I see is a combination of, hey, you do this. I need to see how much control I have and look at what I'm going to do for you. Yeah, of course, you walking the dog is easier for you to manage than taking accountability for what you did to me. Don't unplug my okay, phone. It's I'm not. charging. Don't unplug it. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, I, we have an issue. My mom made an account in my name and my Ten social years ago. seven years ago. I'm Time doesn't matter. This is a, That's another way to minimize. In, my, in a name that I don't go by. And she sent the box back and she moved. So I need you guys to put the account that she made in her name with her social so it's her bill. So what happened? I'm no, here. Don't get involved. Don't get involved in family disputes. You need to take her to court. Okay, so can I just find out how much this bill is? I think it's a hundred and some. Okay, what to get to? This is the mom, Lynette. She thinks it's in her social, but the lady before you said she couldn't find anything under her social. But she couldn't find it because you canceled the account. Yeah, but so you know you made everything up. The The bill got canceled to AT&T and it went on to collections. Because it's a closed account and canceled, I guess, from a long, from last year when I tried to deal with this. Okay, I would need to get the social from the person who was claiming I didn't get that. Okay, let me... Okay, Haley's number is... Can you spot what I'm about to get triggered over? She said, I need the number from the person who is claiming identity theft. Identity theft is a very, very, very serious crime. <laughs> now that the telephone operator has said it, the mother needs to get control of this. She needs to make it seem like she's helping. She, she wouldn't commit a crime. This is all misunderstanding. And also she needs to take agency away from her daughter by her giving the number. Is she about to fire the social security number off from the top of her head? And what's your social? Oh, you don't know it since you used it? Okay, I would need to get the social from the person who was claiming I didn't get down. Okay, let me, okay, Haley's number is, What's her no, rest? I can't take it from you, oh. ma'am. Oh, she's available. sitting. Yeah, she's okay, right here. so are you going to Just file? give her the number. Are you filing this as a no. You're not in control. Or are you just going to tell us the, the amount that the bill is? I can give her the amount, but ma'am, it's not I'm going to Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, let me see here. What's up? There are those two accounts. There's a telephone account. Yeah, the cell phone account is the phone that I'm talking to you on right now. The okay. other account is the one that um, we need to know the amount of money that it is. That amount is going to be one fifty. Okay, so it's one fifty two forty eight. Do you suggest I just pay her the one fifty two forty eight, or? Oh God, this is so tiny. It's so minuscule. Like you might have felt a sting. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys. Okay, you guys, you guys are feeling the sting. If you feel the sting and you don't know why, this is why I think it is. I always, I always say think. I'm giving you a lot of opinions here. Feel free to take in what you want, throw the rest out. Uh, uh, let me play it again one more time. Okay, so it's 152.48. Do you suggest I just pay her the 152.48 or? The fucking operator does not have the final judgment. Or she just said we don't handle family stuff. What the mom wants is for another person in authority, somebody over there, which in this case, it's the operator. This is the highest form of external authority they have. The mom wants the operator to say, yes, I think you should just pay her the 158. Because if the operator says that, the mom is going to ride that all the way to the fucking bank. She's gonna say, the lady said this, the lady said this. And then once again, we have the daughter isolated. And then we have the team over here with the final verdict. Even though the operator doesn't have any jurisdiction to make that say. Pay her the 152.48. Or where do I send this money to to clear this mess up? Uh, so you guys don't tell her to go to court again. I mean, whoever makes the payment, it doesn't matter. But um, I can get you to billing to make the payment. I mean, well, I'm not going to pay it today. But <gasps> yes, you I, are. I can't. You're either going to give me cash today, or you're going to okay, pay so it. Okay, so can I can I get the information to send the to call back to make the payment or to um, mail the payment? Sure, no problem. Uh, okay, let me let me get a pen here. Hold on, I need here. I got one right here. Uh. Wait. <laughs> A quick check-in. I know some of you guys don't get triggered by emotionally manipulative stuff and you're just here for the drama, the gossip, the whatever, but you guys did you get triggered. Are you okay? Are you good? I know that there's a lot of, there's there's probably a lot of stings here. I'm stinging right here, bro. Feels like my whole body got shot up with bullet holes. I want you to know that you're older now, you're much more aware and it, it will never 
happen to you like this again. You're too aware. You're way, way, way too aware. Doesn't mean that it's not gonna hurt again, especially if you're like deep in the moment. You will have a level of consciousness higher than you did when it first happened. You're doing better, okay? This isn't exposure therapy. This is endurance training. <laughs> Oh, um, if I was to do it over the phone um, and it asked me for a billing address, do I use her address in Oakland? The billing address would be here. Actually, no, the because I'm getting the bills Oakland right now. Mom's in control. She's asking dumb questions that she doesn't need the answers to. She just wants to feel in control. She's got everything down. The daughter's not saying anything. And then the daughter realizes something's going on and she calls it out. Look at what the mom does. Actually, no, because I'm getting the bills Oakland right now. Bitch, if you don't tuck that hand out of my face. That's the, stop, you're doing too much. I, I got this. You stay over there. It's another isolating move. This is, you're too much right now. This is, you're, you're alone in this. The too much wound is a, it's a big one. Do you ever, do you ever feel like that? I feel like I've talked about this before, okay? You are not too much. You're not, if you were hurt about something, you were fucking hurt, bro. And it doesn't matter how you express it. And guess what? If you didn't express it well, maybe you didn't have a parent or some somebody that could help you figure out those emotions. If you're hurt, you're fucking hurt, all right? You are not too much. And I think that by accepting you're not too much, you'll be able to feel your emotions, express your emotions, and then control your emotions. But if somebody is constantly suppressing your emotions, whether it's an external force or whether it's you, then you're not gonna feel those things and then they stay bottled up within you. And then when something happens and you get shaken up to the point that they're spilling out you feel you feel like a mess you feel out of control except your emotions they are real and they are not too much yeah i am just like a little youtube armchair person but i i try to encourage you guys to uh take things with a grain of salt and i and i hope that i don't come off as though i'm trying to say everything uh matter of factly so i always try to leave it open-ended or i try to express this is my experience maybe you relate what somebody said therapy bows is back from the war <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, she's back. She, she might get deployed again soon. I mean, that, that, that literally wouldn't matter if the billing address, ma'am. As long as you have that account number and it's applied to an account number, that's, what, that's the most important thing. Okay, so I don't need an address. I just need to give them that account no, number and that dollar amount and call that 800 yes, number. Yes, uh -huh. Okay, and then once that's paid, there's no issues? No, ma'am. I'll uh -huh. call like, someone said break her fingers. Bro, I instantly just picture just reaching my hand out and snap. <laughs> but don't do that. We're, we're reeling it in here. We're reeling it in. We're validating ourselves so that we don't seek validation from others desperately and cause a whirlwind of emotions. I have a question for you. Has my credit been affected by this at all? Like she if she know. hasn't paid this bill in a while, how would that affect me since it's been in my name? Okay, good. I just need, I don't know, you know, I, this is okay. new to me, so. And is this for um, a TV or a phone? What is this bill? Oh, Cable? No. no. This for a home phone. It worked for ever since 2011. Yep. So it's from 2011 for a home phone. You don't even know. Well, I never had a home phone. Bull I've I never had a home phone. Bullshit. Now, yeah. Oh, she she was so ready to jump on that. Oh, well, I never had a home phone. Maybe this is a mistake. That was annoying. That was so fucking annoying, dude. Another one has to tell you exactly what uses and what was on the phone and all that. Okay, so it could be internet or a home phone because I don't yeah. have a home phone, so it could be an oh! internet <laughs> issue. Okay. All right. No problem. Thank you for your help. Here's my daughter. If she needs anything else. All right. Do you need anything else now? Um. No, thank you. Um, if if she doesn't just pay this, me. it's gonna go to collections, and then that would affect my credit. Yes, okay, how how would does that affect my credit? I'm I'm only 22. I don't really know a whole lot about this kind of stuff. Oh my god, that's so sad. Dude, that sucks because you really want your parents to teach you financial literacy. You would like them to teach you what credit is, not teach you the hard way by stealing your identity. That's a really unfortunate form of betrayal that can get normalized by behaviors like this. And so then you seek people that take advantage of you in ways similar to the ways that your parent did. I'm sorry that this has been a really difficult phone conversation. 
uh, or I'm sorry we've been difficult customers. I hope you have a happy holiday, and thank you for your oh, assistance. You too. You're fine. You're I'm just okay. trying to deal with you a know, lot. It's she's been crazy, but thank I, you. I understand. You you like to have a good night. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Here, I'm going to show you what you do to me. I'm going to show you on my computer oh. because it's... Mom, come in here and let me read something to you. Oh, God. What is she about to read? Uh, Kingston, I will take you for a walk in a minute. I like how she has been so spun up. She's so pissed off. She's getting the short end of the stick every turn of the road. And her dog wants to go out. And she still just goes, Kingston, I will get to you in a minute. <laughs> Like, it was so frustrated, but still so sweet at the same time. <laughs> Come in here. I know, but I am frustrated oh. with you because you don't listen to me. I'm trying to well, teach you something. Take a walk. Another odd form of teaming up in isolation. This time with the dog. Uh, oh, your dog wants to take a walk. Uh, me and your dog want this. You want this. You're over here. <laughs> it, it's crazy how you can even do that with a pet. Yeah, that little floor heater back. No, I need that. She's doing so good. She she probably feels so alone in this. I could just be projecting, but I it, I would. I would. She's doing so good. She's a lone warrior. Okay, so there's this thing that you do to me, and I actually recently started doing it to Jason, and I got really mad at myself because I don't want to treat him the way that you treat me because it hurts me. And I realized that you don't even know that you're doing it to me because it's a natural defense mechanism that the brain does, and it's basically like... I've done it for a long time, and it's called emotional distancing, and it's where your brain, like a switch goes off in your brain. Wait, before she explains this, can I? Have you ever gotten caught in the trap of looking at like a list of narcissistic traits, and you're either thinking somebody that you care about could be narcissistic, or you're even thinking, could it be you that's narcissistic? And you're looking at these traits, and you're like, what the they do this or I do this or da 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 and it feels really confusing. One thing that can happen is that if a person gets emotionally abused or they, they deal with a real true narcissist, okay? A real true narcissistic person. What happens is that narcissistic person is constantly using their arsenal of tools on the unwilling victim, okay? We'll call them the normal person. And the narcissist is always using these tools and the normal person starts to say, oh my God, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt. Well, well, I don't know why what you're doing is hurting me so bad, but I'm going to copy that because it's clearly protecting you. And maybe I can use that to protect myself from other people. Basically a learned behavior. So sometimes people that were raised by emotionally manipulative people, they end up picking up emotionally manipulative traits and unfortunately carrying it in into other relationships. It is crazy and really beautiful that she articulates really well that she's doing this to her partner and she doesn't like it. Now, a reminder, people that are true narcissists, they are empty at their very core. There is nothing there. They need control and other people to make them feel whole. But sometimes a vulnerable person who does have something inside of them can pick up narcissistic traits because they're trying to protect themselves. I think it's really great she recognized this in herself and didn't want to treat her partner that way. For a long time, and it's called emotional it's distancing. Like the mom and the it's dog. where your brain, like a switch goes off in your brain and you just don't care. Things just don't matter. Like your reality changes. And it happens to me from time to time. And I really don't like that you do it to me. And I'm going to read this to you because this is the scientists, the science behind it. And it's definitely a huge issue. Can I'm, you just I'm, focus? I'm, I'm going to try to give him attention. But I don't need you to do that. I need you to focus on this right now. Haley, no. I am listening. Mom, Ooh, I don't, don't yell at I me. don't want you to do this right now. I'm trying to can talk to you and you're just I am focusing on the dog. It's crazy that she's trying to talk to her about emotional distancing and that's exactly what her mom is doing right now, using distractions to drive a wedge between her and the conversation. She is actively emotionally distancing herself right in front of her while she's trying to talk about it. Everything you're saying, Haley. Read okay, well, it. how about you read this article I don't then. have my glasses I, on. I ah! can't see anything anymore. Of course. I can't. Whatever. Emotional distancing is an all too common behavioral pattern which repels many people into counseling. If you or your partner withdraw from each other emotionally, it helps to understand that this reaction isn't always intentional. This is an issue that Jason and I are having because I will be with him and then all of a sudden I won't I won't care about anything. Like I like he'll be affectionate to me and I'll look at him like with no emotion in my eyes. Like whatever. Like what are you looking at me like that for? Like he'll look at me like, "Oh, you look really nice right now." And I'll just look at him like 
Like nothing. And it's because my brain, a switch goes off, and you do it to me. When I try to talk to you about things that, are, that me, matter to me, you you go a different direction and you change the subject and you just ignore it. Is like, this that I'll, card you gave me? No, is this is a completely there? different thing. Oh. I googled what I've been doing, and I and I found out that this is it has a name and it's a problem that because how James treated us growing up. I went through shit, you went through your own shit, and now we have this issue because you do it to me and I'm doing it to him and I want to stop this because I don't like it. Can I, I take a picture oh, of that? I'll write oh, down the website. No, I'm visual. I She's need not going to okay, do anything then, with okay, it. Okay, if you, okay, we, when we get overwhelmed from the demands of a relationship or other stresses, we sometimes isolate emotionally. We might be physically present, but we remain emotionally absent. When other people may not notice, but those close to us can often sense when we're somewhere else. In other words, the lights are on, but no one's home. And I don't like that description about it because it makes you seem like yeah. you're crazy and we're not. It just says, it's just because, like, when, like, for instance, Jason treats me really nicely. And you dated James for a long time, and I watched him treat you like Damn, shit. she's... And then I dated she's shit. She's trying to break the, the generational trauma cycle. And he treated me like shit, and he was abusive. And so, like, I haven't had a ton of great relationships in my life, so I'm used to being treated like shit. And now that I'm dating Jason and he's treating me so nicely, she does not I'm accept it. The fuck out because yeah. I don't know how to deal with that because I'm used to dealing with other things. Uh -huh. So my brain switches that switch off, so I emotionally don't care about anything anymore. And then he thinks that I don't like him because I'm not all the way there and I'm not showing my my emotions. Mm -hmm. And it normally happens in the middle of sex. I'll just stop being myself and I just won't want anything to do with anything anymore. And I'll we'll stop having sex and I won't want to put my clothes on. And I feel like not. Me, oh, myself, she just... I feel like something is invading my brain and making me boring and, mo you know, monotone, how people just talk like this and they don't have any yeah, emotion? No, That's what I shut, become. I shut become down. monotone. Shut down. Maybe you need to change that. Well, okay. you... Oh, maybe you need to change that? Oh, shut the fuck up. How many of you guys can't accept compliments? Isn't that weird? That, that's kind of what she's talking about. Not being able to accept love. If you have trouble accepting love or compliments. I am somebody that definitely grew up like this. I even felt uncomfortable when somebody would say happy birthday. <laughs> I had a couple of weird lines I would give back because I couldn't even accept a happy birthday. It might be interesting to see like how did people in your life, whether it's brothers, sisters, caretakers, whatever, how did they show you love? And if it wasn't direct, if it wasn't through comfort, if it wasn't through kind gestures or compliments, they might have shown you love. I was talking about this earlier. Some people have parents that do intimacy bonding over a common enemy. The parent only opens up when they're gossiping or talking shit. So somebody might start to perceive talking shit as a form of love. Some parents might be emotionally shut down. They only showed love through gifts but they never complimented you. Evaluate to yourself. Like, how do you think your formative people showed you love? And if it wasn't handed to you unconditionally and kindly, um, then you may have, you might shut down when somebody's nice to you. That's what I become. I become monotone completely. Yeah, you need to change that. Well, you, you do it to me. You do it to me. Boyfriend. No, I'm not going to because I'm working on it with the Soul Healing Center. I want to go back and have oh. them do another blessing. And, I, and I'm working on mind exercises to strengthen my mind so oh. that my brain doesn't put that switch on. Endurance test! To understand this so that you can work on it because I can't fix myself until you start to fix yourself because I need you to emotionally be able to not shut down on me when I try to talk to you about mm -hmm. bad things that happen right. because I do feel like I need an apology from you and like I feel like you've cut me off every single time since I since I openly admitted to you what happened when I was 16 in Moraga Ouch. and it's just like I can't deal with you emotionally disconnecting and not being there for me and I don't want to do it to other people and like you need to stop doing it to me too. It's God not it's like damn. not something that you mean to do. Your brain does it as a defense mechanism because she's giving her so much grace. She's completely distracting herself with the dog and is not listening at all despite how shitty the situation is and can't listen. I had an example of this where somebody that I used to date when I would um, try to talk about something really serious, they would fix my hair or pick something off my shirt, make me feel like my words weren't important, but they were still taking care of me and I was dirty. Or I, it was a little distraction with a little bit of a way to demean me and also a way on top of it to show that I wasn't important. And I'd be like, don't do that. It might help to understand that emotional distancing is a coping strategy that is usually learned early in life. It's an implicit procedure that at one time su served a purpose and it often happens without conscious awareness and occur I'm going to I'm going to read this again and I'm going to have King 
on my other side so that you can actually focus because you're acting like She's a child saying, right now and I want you to focus on to what I'm saying. I'm trying to get him attention before I leave. You don't need to, to focus on him right now. You need to focus on me. I'm your kid. This is my dog. Okay, okay? go ahead. Emotional distancing was once an optimal coping strategy. So at one point in time, it was a great way to cope with things. It might help to understand that emotional distancing is a coping strategy that is usually learned early in life. Mm -hmm. It it's an implicit procedure that at one time served a purpose. It often happens without conscious awareness and occurs automatically. If I was doing this, I would stop right there and I would say, what did you get from that? Or, I mean, if you want to be a real bitch, you can say, like, repeat it back to me. I need to know that you're listening. You, like, you, they probably won't respond to all of that. But, like, you can ask, like, what did you get from that? Here's what I got from that. What did you get from that? Because otherwise she's just going to read this and her mom's, like, not going to listen at all. You may already be aware that our emotional brain directs us in ways that we are not always conscious of. So that's a part of the article that I took a picture of because it, it really key points... It really makes me Send feel this top part. It really makes me feel less crazy because I understand why I feel so uncomfortable when my boyfriend tells me that I'm sexy and why I want to cry when he does that. It's because he's so nice to me, and yeah, I I freak out when he when he wants anything to do with sex, and it, I've I've never felt like this before. In all of my previous relationships, I was freaky or whatever, and now I can't even be myself with him. Oh wait, I like this. Okay. Heck said something cool in chat earlier that I agree with. And then just now they said, do y'all see how fast she's talking? How she feels like she has to get everything out as soon as possible before her mom loses interest or throws her off track. Throwing everything out because she feels like she has such a, a small window of attention for her to finally listen. And she feels like she has to get it all out really, really, really fast. This is her one shot. This is her one opportunity. That's very, I, I agree with that personally. As it's bringing shit back up from the past. It's making me feel and remember and I I don't really know how to deal with it. It's really fucking with me. And like I feel like in order for me to heal easier, I need you to treat me a little bit differently and not do this to me because I don't want to do it to other people. Mm. And I do it to other people and you do it to me and it's just this nasty cycle and it really hurts me. Like I it fucks with my head and then when I go into that mood where my brain switches and you know what I'm talking about. I know you know because you do it all the time. And we don't have I don't have complete control over it yet because it happened to me last night at his house and I told him I said I'm not myself right now. Like I don't care. Like nothing matters in my head right now. And it happened to me all the time in the Grand Cherokee so Jeep. LOL. So she just said she has more of a conscience. So you consciously or an asshole she says okay with complete denial in her voice like she's a little angel oh this girl's trying she's doing a really good job i think i'm like we that. Would... i'm more um i, I know. have a, i'm more of a conscience and no more it's it's concerned that doesn't make sense mom you do exactly this to me this mm -hmm. is what okay. you do to me you just don't care like there's text messages that i texted you and you didn't respond at all oh i because wasn't even available i was in the middle of the it doesn't matter if working. you it doesn't matter if you were available that day or not you could have texted me back a day later three days later four days later you never re you responded the next day with photos and something completely oblivious to what I was talking about okay. and that really hurt me because ah, I was putting I, out my emotions and my okay, feelings then you need to calm oh, god I don't know what she's about to say but I want to comment on that one that's another thing too when there's like a fight or an argument and two people separate and they're not talking for a bit the way that you guys bridge back together is like some kind of bid for connection. Sometimes in a healthy world, the bid for connection was, hey, I'm sorry we had that misunderstanding last night. How are you feeling about it? Do you want to talk more? You know, that that could be something after a big blowout. But when there's a big blowout and then a parent or friend, their bid for connection is just a, a new topic. Hey, here's a picture of the dog. Hey, here's this. Here's this. And you guys never talk about it, but you care about each other and you want to reconnect. Then it just, it creates this dynamic where you're just constantly sweeping everything under the rug. And it makes you feel like your feelings don't matter. Uh, everything's always swept under the rug. Constantly, constantly, constantly. So then later on, you sweep other people's feelings under the rug. Your feelings get swept under the rug and you don't give a fuck. You think you, think you don't matter. <laughs> and that really hurt me because I was putting I, out my emotions and my okay, feelings. you need to call me or we need to do it in no, person. No, you need to just not, text. you need to actually just, text. you need to actually just be professional about anything because my coworkers text me and I respond to them every time. You know why? Because we work together and we're a system okay, and we're well, a group. Sometimes I turn my phone off. Everyone is meant to serve each other and it doesn't matter okay, well, if I texted you and you couldn't respond respond you could have responded you've responded to me today like you've never apologized okay, well, can you've you never talk to me different you've never apologized to me for what happened and that really hurts me and it, it makes Maybe me sad that true, you know are you, 
What? I have said I never knew anything happened. I have talked to you about it. No, but it. you I never said to... you never said I'm so sorry. I did not mean for this to happen. You just like ignored me the day I told you. I've gotten triggered enough. I have. At this point in the conversation, mom has planted her feet firmly in the ground. She is not moving. When somebody plants her feet in the ground like this and they're treating you like this, you have to set a boundary and you have to walk away. But listen, spoiler alert. This girl, she posted this on YouTube because it was a video she had where she tried with her mom. And after several attempts, I think she gave up. I think she got to the point where she wanted to pull the curtain off of the narcissist. She posted it and it's been up for over seven years. She's never taken it down. So, I mean, we can only hope the best for her, but personally, I think she handled that really well. And if her mom like doesn't care enough about backing down off of her ego um, to have a healthy relationship with her daughter where she's not having anxiety attacks, then her mom go fuck herself. 